On today's show, we're going to have a look at the new extruder system from Bontec for the CR-10S. Hey gang, my name is Richard Cleveland. Welcome to the first layer. This is a show that explores the world of 3D printing. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button. Also, ding that little bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode and upload it to YouTube. We've got a lot to go into today on the Bontech extruder for the CR-10, so let's get started. So what we're going to do is we are going to replace our existing extruder with the Bontech. And just to give you an idea what that Bontech looks like, Let's just cut over to the Bontech here and you guys can have a look-see. Here is the Bontech extruder. Now inside this box, we'll just kind of get it open here. This is for the CR-10 and the CR-10S. You're going to find everything that you need to put the Bontech onto your current machine. Why would you want to upgrade to the Bontech extruder? Well, apparently, from what I understand, the Bontech extruder is a far superior double gear extruder over the single gear extruder that we get with the CR-10. So what the Bontech is going to do for you is it's going to give you better extrusion. Now we're going to test that out. We're going to install the Bontech right here onto my CR-10S. That came from my home, incidentally. Let's talk a little bit about the some of the upgrades I've already done on this particular unit. Okay, I've got all kinds of shadow on me today, so Bear with me. So one of the things that I did was I put this nice little light bar up on top. I'll do, I'll go into another episode on how to do this. It's really, really simple. All you need is some 12 volt uh, S or LEDs. And uh, I've just wired it up and I've wired it directly into the mains power on my CR-10. I have put stepper dampeners on both the X and the Y and I upgraded the case you might say for the filament out detection uh, which we're going to get into in just a little bit so let's flip this on and let's start with putting together our Bontech extruder now we do need a few materials but not too many first thing that you want to do is unhook this cable from the extruder let's go to uh, an overhead shot here there you guys can see you can see how this cable here sits in that little channel. Well, we're gonna undo that. We're gonna take our spanner wrench, which we got with our CR-10. So all the tools that you got with your CR-10 or CR-10S um, are perfect for this job. So we're just gonna unscrew that. I'm gonna push that off to the side. Once that's done, we want to get rid of this uh, extruder that is currently here. We're going to find the right wrench that we need, and we are going to start, and that is not it. Of course that's not it. Now, some of these are not standard, and for whatever reason, the CR-10 kit doesn't give you everything you need. So I've got one of these iFixits um, units that I really, really like using. It's got all kinds of bits in it, and it comes in very handy. If you don't have one of these iFixits, I would highly recommend that you get one. Uh, they do work very, very well. And the socket that we need for this is the 2.5 because these are three mils. And if they're a little hard to undo, take one of your wrenches and slip it through the hole in the handle and that will give you some additional leverage or leverage to uh, get those Parts undone. And again, not standard. They don't they didn't use standard size bolts on any of this. I'm going to start by taking out these ones. We're just going to put them aside. We may not put them back in. 
Going to remove the extruder completely. Once we have the extruder off, we'll come back and show you what we're doing. We've unmounted the motor from the um, machine, and now we're going to go ahead and start to put the parts on that we need for the Bontech. First, we have to remove the stock gear, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll find the right wrench, and we will get rid of the stock gear. We're going to use the gear that Bontech suggested for us which comes as part of the kit and these can be a little tight on here so you want to just make sure that you can take them off and we will go ahead and grab that gear which is in a little plastic bag you can't miss it it's very important exactly how we're going to do this so as you can see here we've got that flat spot and there is only one grub screw on this particular gear and what it says to do is you want to drive that down so that grub screw is at the top or near the end of your setup okay so once you've installed it it should look something like that you're going to have about one to one and a half millimeters distance between the bottom or the top of the stepper motor and the bottom of the grub screw so we're just going to move that down just a little bit so we get lined up and then we're going to tighten up that grub screw we're going to tighten that grub screw on the flat spot of the shaft we'll just give that a little tighten and there we go so that is the first step to getting this grub screw on. Now the next step is going to be setting up the rack, the mount for the or the mounting bracket for the uh, filament out sensor. Now this filament out sensor, you're going to use the stock one. We're going to use a little bit of PTFE tubing like we have here. Here is the apparatus that we are going to use and we'll see exactly how that all goes together so we'll get out the parts that we need we'll lay them down here we're going to take off this extruder mount first and all you have to do in this case if you're using the stock one you're not going to have to do this step by taking these out but if you're not using the stock one, you are going to need to take these apart. All right, so now we have our switch removed from the housing. We are going to put the switch right into this housing here, just like so. We'll line it all up. We're going to put the cover on. All right, so once you've got that in there, all you're going to do is just take a couple of the screws that you had from before and you're just going to put them in there and that should solve your issue so first and foremost we are going to get our motor which is right there we're going to slide that on like so you can see how that fits in there okay so slide your motor up into the motor housing you want to make sure that the pins for the motor are facing the most open section there is a reason for that, and we will get into that in just a second. Let's pop on the extruder, and we'll start to tighten up some of them bolts. So now we have all four in there, and this is the orientation that you want to put the or remount the extruder onto the CR-10, right there. So we are going to mount that in. Nothing seems to be in our way. We're going to grab the four screws that came with the unit, which again are M3s. And we're just going to take that M3 and we're going to drop that right in there. We'll get the first one started. 
So now the bond tech is installed. The next thing that we need to do is grab our motor and we need to switch two cables on our motor cable. If you're looking at the motor cable from this angle, now all this is also in the instructions, so uh, don't be afraid to look at the instructions. We're going to take our motor cable. Let's get that orientated properly. Got a lot of grease in there. The extruder, getting grease all over my fingers. So you can see we've got a wire that is crossed over. Um, these two are crossed. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to open these up. We'll just use uh, something really small to get in there. We'll open them up. That's too big. Uh, maybe what we'll do is we will grab our X-Acto knife, put a fresh blade in it, and we will switch those two around. All right, so what they want you to do is by using a hobby knife with a fresh blade, you're just going to lift up on this tab and you're going to move the one position and the four position. So you're going to take the cable out of the four position, take the cable out of the one position, and just swap them around. We've already done that. So now we can go ahead and plug this back into our stepper motor, just like so. Now plugged into our stepper motor, we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and plug in the cable for our filament out detection sensor. When you're not using knives like this, you go ahead and put them back in the case. Put them back in your little toolbox and call it a day. We'll go ahead and plug this one back in. Make sure that the tabs are facing in the right direction. In this case, they need to be facing up. You'll feel it click into place, and there you go. Now what we want to do is we want to remove this coupler on our Bowden tube. So it's kind of difficult to get in there because this Bowden tube is a little slippery. You can use a piece of pliers or a pair of pliers, a piece of pliers, a pair of pliers, whatever you like. I'm going to push that up. And we're going to push this down to unlock it. And get that cable out of there. There we go. Well, that went away. Watch for flying parts when you're doing this. So now we want to take this Bowden tube and we want to push it right into here as far as it will go. And there's a little black collar right there that's already on the Bowden tube. So now we're in good shape. So we've got that all done. Now the last thing that we need to do is install the little feeder, which is this little guy right here. That's the feeder, or your tensioner, pardon me. We'll install the tensioner, which should drop right in there. There we go, you can feel it. And that's gonna give you tension on your feed roller. Okay, so we've got that done. All we have to do now is just load in some filament. And we are pretty much ready to go. Before we go ahead and do that, though, let's go over to the computer and make some changes in our Slicer software. All right, so I have both programs that I use to help facilitate teaching you guys. Right now, we're working with the CR10S, both on the um, Simplify 3D and Ultimatrix Cura. This is the latest version of Ultimatrix Cura, which we're going to cover in a later video. What you want to do is you want to go to settings, go to printer, make sure that you are on the printer that you want to make the changes to, go down to manage printers. Now you'll see the printer that you're currently on highlighted and all you're going to do is go to machine settings. Down here in the, I'll just take that out for now. This is what your start G code should look like when you're in this particular mode. 
Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your cursor is behind the word home on the first line of G28. Hit enter. Type in this command. We're just going to paste in the command that we had there before, which is M92 space E415 space semicolon set new E step value for the Bontech DMG extruder. And actually put a space in there so that way the English is correct. So once you've done that, you're now ready to slice a model using the Bontech extruder. Now to do that over here in Simplify 3D, you're going to make sure that your process is selected. You're going down to Edit Process Settings or you can just double click. And once you've got that open, you want to go over to where it says Scripts, not Key Code. You're going to say Scripts. And you'll find that Start Script again uh, will be the first tab once you open that. Again, you'll have you'll start with a G28 Home All Access, and then right behind or right underneath that, you are going oh, right underneath that you're going to add the M92 E415 uh, command. Again, what this is doing is it's setting your E steps for your extruder to work properly with your CR cap. All right, so that's all there is to setting up the Bontech BMG extruder for your CR10 or CR10S from Creality. Now, this is the first part in a series of upgrades that we're going to be doing on this particular CR10. Up next, on the next episode, we will be actually changing out the extruder for, or pardon me, not the extruder, we're going to change out the hot end for the Micro Swiss CR10 hot end so that we can print with just about any material that we want. Now, if you've got something out of today's episode, please go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell, share this video with your friends, and leave a comment down below. We try and answer as many comments as we can when the comments come in. Now, that being said, I've got to thank a few people today. First and foremost, my staff. Of course, they do a wonderful job around here. And uh, they help me each and every time that I've got something new to do. Now, I also want to thank Spool3D for because without them, we wouldn't have the studio. And I wouldn't have access to the parts that I need to put onto these machines. Now, bear in mind, this is not sponsored by Spool3D in terms of the stuff that we put onto my particular machine. Because this is mine. So, all of the stuff that goes on here, we have to pay for. So, full disclosure there. Now, Spool 3D has everything that you need from printers, accessories, upgrades, and filaments. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right. Print it with Spool 3D. Coming up on our next episode, as I said, we're going to be installing the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End on the CR10. We've got a couple of things that we're going to be doing with this CR10 over the next few episodes. We're going to eventually put on a Pets Fang. Um, blower system um, and we are going to put on a uh, bed leveling system so over the next four episodes or so that's what you're gonna see so stick with us make sure you hit that bell notification and until next time my friends remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print